these high-powered programs could be the next Pac-10 champion. Twelfth-ranked USC has the third-best defense in the nation. Fifth-ranked Oregon has the second-best total offense in the nation. Let's right through a tackle. USC and Oregon, Trojan pride versus duck power. Twelfth-ranked USC, fifth-ranked Oregon, next. It is the most anticipated game in a 41-year history of Austin Stadium here on the campus of the University of Oregon in Eugene. The Oregon Ducks, they feel they've got a statement to make today. USC, they feel they have something to prove as well. That's what makes it on this Kyocera College Football Saturday as the USC Trojans come calling on the hometown Oregon Ducks. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, Petros Papadakis. And what a day we've got for you here on FSN. Our biggest day ever also. Three games, more than 10 hours, and are we going to answer a whole bunch of questions? Mythological, epic battles, Barry, throughout the Pac-10 today. All of them right here on FSN. And none bigger than this one in Autzen Stadium. I can't wait. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be unbelievable. Well, let's talk about Oregon's offense, first of all. They run the spread offense. They run it better than anybody in the country. And in this case, you not only have to stop one guy, you got to stop two guys. That's what makes it tough. They're like watching an action movie with explosions and bodies flying all over the place. Dennis Dixon, beautiful, finesse, composure. He's having a renaissance here. He's running around. He's passing at a 70% clip. Jonathan Stewart, the perfect mix of power and speed. He's the best running back in the pack 10 Doesn't get any better than these two guys. And as good as that offense is, they got to face the number three defense in the nation. USC can really bring it defensively. Great combination of linebackers that are all starting this game for the first time in a long time. Ray Malaluga, he's aggressive. He's crazy. He frightens people. Keith Rivers is a big time player, and he's leading this team in tackles. Very fast, playmaking ball hawk on the edge, and Cushing might be the best of them all. He is finally healthy. These guys have their work cut out for him this afternoon noon versus that high-powered Oregon Ducks offense. Yeah, it's just one of those games that you just wait and wait for, and they don't come along very often. It's the and here come the Oregon Ducks before a sellout crowd and a crowd that has anticipated this game for a long, long time. And what the Ducks want to do, of course, is keep that crowd involved in the game. I think, however, whoever gets out quickly is going to go a long way. This game brought to you in stunning high definition by Hitachi. Right now, let's take to the sidelines and for the first time today, meet the third member of our broadcast team here once more is Jim Watson. Waddy. Barry, USC arrives in Eugene with a lot of questions on their mind, the biggest of which, of course, how will Mark Sanchez respond to the magnitude of this college football game? His first two starts a little shaky against Arizona, much better last week against the Fighting Irish, and Pete Carroll told us last night that that start at South Bend has given him the confidence. He knows that Mark Sanchez is ready to go. There's also a legacy for this kind of thing. Matt Leinert got his first nod on the road at Auburn. John David Booty made his bones at Arkansas. So Mark Sanchez is not alone today. He's got his history and the weather on his side 62 degrees blue skies zero chance of rain two great teams and 10 hours of football Barry Petros where would you rather be I'm telling you and when was the last time you heard that forecast up here Pete Carroll of course as always he's very chatty right up to kickoff time and uh, if he's nervous he never shows it I'll tell you that he prepares his team well with a lot of energy they come out and they have a very relaxed walk through you always expect the USC team to be ready to play and very loose and they are just that. There's a look at Mike Bellotti. Bellotti very confident. SC, incidentally, uh, SC won the toss and deferred, so they will take the ball to start the second half. They will kick it away to Oregon. Beater will be the kicker. Brown and Crenshaw, the deep man for Oregon. Stewart normally is on the deep team to return, but because he's going to carry so much of a load with Jeremiah Johnson out, he will not return kicks today. This is Crenshaw, four yard line. Crenshaw fumbles. SC has it. Just like that. Well, there is a start, of course, that Oregon absolutely did not want. And Mike Bellotti and everybody else talking about the fact they must take care of the football. Spit it up on the first offensive, not even the first offensive play, but on the kickoff. Backup wide receiver Brad Walker causing this fumble. Crenshaw, a sophomore out of Southern California. This Oregon team is great when they don't turn the ball over and play perfectly on special teams, and that's his own player before Walker even gets there, causing that fumble. Very tough play. That's Andiel Brown causing that fumble. 
Washington will be the setback behind Sanchez. Ball at the 21-yard line. Sanchez going for it all right now. And it is almost intercepted. Getting a hand on that ball was Patrick Chung. Almost had a pick. Triple coverage, really, and a good push up front coming from John Bacon. Let's take a look at the Kyocera lineups. First of all, for the USC Trojans. We talked about Mark Sanchez at the quarterback position, but the guy that he looks to in crucial situations, not his wideouts this year so much, Fred Davis, outstanding tight end, getting better and getting more noticed every week. Listen to the crowd. They are involved. Second half. This is Washington. Washington gets a little room down close to the 15-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about five and a late flag. And I think that may go. Oregon is suggesting that that's going against USC. Things seem to happen faster when the crowd is going wild here in Autzen Stadium. When you're on that opposing team, there is a frantic nature in your heart when you listen to this crowd. There's the foul on the Trojans. You make mistakes like that, you're going to see the late hit right here. And that's Shiloh Rashal. He's been injured. He's starting a game. That was a big plus for the Trojans having him back, but that is not a big plus. Uh, playing like that, the junior out of Compton, California, Shiloh Rochelle having a great year, starting out this game on the wrong foot for the USC Trojans. Joe McKnight comes into the ball game for the first time today at the running back spot, the freshman out of River Ridge, Louisiana, and he is getting better with every out as well. Six defensive backs for the Ducks. Third down and 20. Just a three-man rush and a screen this time. Plenty of room for McKnight at the 20. Trying to get outside 15, and he's going to be just short of the first down at about the 13-yard line. Big pickup of about 17. Walter Thurman runs him out. Beautifully designed play for the Trojans. You always expect a draw or a screen on third down and long, and the Trojans doing a great job that time finding some space for Joe McKnight. Now they got a decision to make. Fourth down and one, the Trojans will go. The last six fourth down attempts against this Oregon defense have failed. Big moment early in this game. Two tight ends, Davis and Thompson. Empty backfield. Give to McKnight, and McKnight is gonna be stopped short. John Bacon makes the call. They brought McKnight on the reverse off the wing, and he is stopped short of the first down. Listen to that crowd, Barry. Big time play for the Oregon defense. Aliotti's defense stepping up in a big way, but very questionable call to run an end around when you have one yard to go for a guy that normally runs sideways as a young freshman. But Knight has got to find a way to get upfield quickly on that play. And like you said, Bacon stepping up and making a good play on the true freshman. And Oregon has recovered from that special team's turnover. Great play by the defense. Questionable call by USC offensively trying the end around. Seven straight stops on fourth down now for the Oregon Duck defense. Dixon with an empty backfield. Now they bring Stewart and line him up in the backfield. They'll give you a lot of different looks. Quick toss this time on a screen to Garrett Strong. And Strong will get a couple, no more. Just a quick screen. Here's the defense and the Keosara lineups for the Oregon Duck, or rather the offense. Dennis Dixon, of course, is the quarterback of this Duck team. Jason Williams, he's their deep threat. They had a whole bunch of them, but injuries have depleted the wide receiver core for the Ducks. Second down and eight. It's Lewis coming in motion. And Dixon on the keeper. Trying to get outside, cannot do it. Great pursuit that time by Kevin Ellison and a loss of about three. Kyocera lineups defensively for the USC Trojans. Pick your poison here. Many people feel seven first round draft choices on this team. Here's one of them, Lawrence Jackson. I think the onus really is gonna fall on the defensive ends in how they can stop that Oregon option. The key word here, Barry, is discipline for the USC defense. And you just saw it right there. Oregon gives you a lot of looks and there's a lot of guys running in every direction. You have to watch that offensive line to see where the ball is going. Third down and nine. Dixon straight back this time, has time. Now he's gonna run, he's got room. 
It's a good block to the 20. First down and out of bounds. Jonathan Stewart gave him a great block. And he put a big hit on Ray Malaluga, who's a big-time player. 11-yard run for Dennis Dixon. And you see how smart he is. He gets out of bounds immediately before this USC defense can hit him. I think that's a key for USC. They've got to punish Dixon. You see the great block there by Stewart before Harris can come up and make the stop or put some kind of hit on Dixon. He's out of bounds with a first down. At the 25-yard line, Dixon this time going to go up. Now he reverses his field. He can run again. He will with a 30. He gets down close to another first down, maybe about a half yard short at the 34-yard line. Let's take a look at our KFC scouting report. It'll give you a little bit of a comparison here of the run offense of Oregon and the run defense of USC. And uh, again, today, something's got to give. And something will give here. Oregon's got to keep running the ball. Dennis Dixon's got to do it. He's got to get down and not take hits. And, and Stewart's got to punish this defense because he'll be there in the fourth quarter if they, if they let him get involved early. And so far, Dixon has done exactly the right thing on the keeper again. Again, he gets down. Mike Bellotti told us he's going to have a first down here. We're going to go to the sideline right now. And Jim Watson, Whitey. Well, boys, obviously, Dennis Dixon is a focal point in this game. Pete Carroll said he wanted to smack him in the mouth early, maybe slow him down like they did with Jake Locker against Washington. And remember what Mike Bellotti said. He has three instructions for Dennis Dixon when he runs the football. First down, touchdown, or get down. And he has done two of the three so far. He has carried the ball four straight times. Dixon this time will put it up, and that's a little miscommunication. Just a miscommunication on the route run by Garen Strong. Remember, they lost two starting receivers. They lost Pacinger, then they lost Colvin. And those were two guys who could get behind the defense. Right now, they feel they really only have one guy, Jason Williams, and another guy who we will see this afternoon, Terrence Scott, a JC transfer who was going to redshirt. They took the redshirt off him last week. There are a lot of guys that you can plug into this offense at wide receiver. They're going to put up numbers, but Dixon obviously most comfortable with Coleman and Pacinger and Williams. Two of those guys are out now, and he's working with some new guys. Four wide receiver. Here's that quick screen again. And Strong will get it across the 40 to the 41, but it's going to be third and long. Taylor Mays and Ray Maoluga on the tackle. And that time you saw the speed of the USC defense. Malaluga, Mays getting over there in a big hurry, not giving up a lot of yardage there on second down. And that's what they have to do all game. The key for USC is get off the field, win on third down, so they can get their back offense back out there and get the defense rest, because this is a fast defense, but they get tired, and Oregon will run you around all afternoon. Third down and seven. Dixon. He's got all day to throw it. Now he does, and the ball is caught for a first down. And that's going to be Aaron Flugrad, a guy who just catches everything in his area. He's not going to beat you with a lot of speed, runs great routes, catches the football. Coaches kids. As you know, his dad, Robin Berry, is a wide receiver coach. He's also worked in Washington State and Arizona State. His son knows how to find holes in that secondary. Great job by the Oregon offensive line. Thomas Williams ended up making that tackle. USC tried to rush for there and get a rush with it, and they could not. They're going to have to start blitzing if they want to get any kind of pressure on Dixon when he drops straight back like that on third and long. It is a very good and a very experienced offensive line that the Ducks have. Dixon straight back. Now he'll tuck it away and run. He'll get to the four. Inside the 40 to the 38, close to another Oregon first down. Keith Rivers on the stop. Well, Dixon, of course, guy who is a two-sport athlete, even though Oregon doesn't have a baseball team, he plays professional baseball in the Atlanta Braves organization. On track to graduate in three and a half years with a 3-4 grade point average. Only class is taking his year is billiards. I didn't know they offered that. Teaches you angles. And a catch made for a first down this time by Terrence Scott. We talked about Scott. They were going to redshirt him. They took the redshirt off last week, so this is only his second game. It was a JC transfer out of College of the Canyons. So it'll be first down, and again, they go, as always, with a no-huddle. 
And here's Dixon on a keeper. Cuts it inside, gets inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. And I'll tell you, this, this is a thing of beauty to, to watch. It certainly is just the misdirection and the way things are run and how they stretch, stretch, stretch and go upfield. That time, April Spicer catching up. And the Trojans not doing a bad job of getting to the quarterback and tackling Jonathan Stewart, but not before they gain big yards. And they're right back at the line of scrimmage, ready to run another play. Here's Dixon. He's going to get some room again. Goes out of bounds at about the 25. Everson Griffin, the freshman, chased him out. And that time you saw Griffin having to run, run faster than he's ever run in his life, though he is a pretty quick young freshman, just to get Dixon, just to edge him out of bounds. And this will tire you out. Look at the effort that Griffin's got to make just to get him out of bounds. And Dixon does not take the hit. He's in fantastic shape. He can do this all day, and USC's defense is getting tired. Third down and three. They're giving it to Stewart. Stewart first down and more. Lip legs up. SC defender takes it all the way to the 11 yard line. What a great effort by Stewart. That time, Kerry Harris trying to get to the legs. When you have a big, giant guy, and you see the beautiful zone that Oregon's running, just clearing everybody out. When you have a guy that big going upfield and you're a corner like Kerry Harris, only 180 pounds, you try to get to his legs, but Stewart is just so fantastic on his feet, just so able to jump and move and get outside that he evades that tackle and falls forward. Gain of 15, 11th play of the drive, the ball at the 11 yard line, first down. This is Crenshaw for the first time inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Jeremiah Johnson, of course, injured a couple of weeks ago. On comes Andre Crenshaw, another talented back. Yeah, he did not have a bad game. Pretty big yards, 115 versus UW. And like I said earlier, the wide receiver situation is almost the same. When you have an offense that's going this well, and Dennis Dixon's doing this well, and you have stalwart like Stewart starting, you can plug other guys in and they get confidence because there's open space for them to run it. Stewart back in the ball game. This is Stewart inside the five, down to about the three yard line, running down to the two. I'll tell you, there's not a lot of room in there, and he's gaining yards. Well, watch how he gets his shoulder pads facing toward the end zone. You see that, how he gets upfield and then just starts moving those big legs toward his goal. When you ever get those shoulder pads pointing the right direction, good things happen. Third down and two. They have plenty of time because they don't hunt. And this time, straight up the middle into the end zone goes Dixon. that DeMarco Farr was talking about before the game started. Malaluga is going to have to be more disciplined in this game and look at the offensive line as opposed to peeking in the backfield. That time, sucked away. Dixon takes it to the house. 13 plays, 72-yard drive. Took it four minutes and 51 seconds. 11 of those 15 plays running. Two minutes and 50 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter. Oregon leads at 7 and nothing. Take a look at the Kawasaki scoring drive. We talked about it a moment ago, 4 minutes and 24 seconds. Importantly, Oregon is rushed in this game for 79 yards. With 2 minutes and 50 seconds remaining to go in the first quarter, USC's average per game against the rush, 64. This kick is dribbled down to Johnson. Johnson gets in the gap. Tries to take to the outside down at the 26-yard line. So now the onus falls on the USC offense. Sanchez gave to Washington, got a gap across the 30 to about the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. Pickup of about seven. Tukuafu on the stop for the Ducks. Well, they tried Joe McKnight early in this game on fourth and one. I don't think you're going to see that again. Chauncey Washington, a much more physical back, a senior out of Torrance, California, a guy that knows how to go upfield. And you're absolutely right, Barry. The onus now is on the USC offense. 13th play drive for the Ducks. A lot of minutes taken off the clock. That defense is absolutely tired. They're all sitting on the bench. This offense has got to pick them up and get the first down. Second. 
Second down, 11. Give this time to McKnight. McKnight's got a gap at midfield. Got one man to beat. At the 30, still on his feet, he's gone. And a flag is down. Flag is down back at the 42-yard line. So hold the phone. Holding against USC. And Mark Sanchez, the quarterback, knew it right away. You see the dejection on Pete Carroll's face. He's being relatively calm for Coach Carroll. Very tough call for the Trojans at that point. You saw the great move by McKnight, the stop move. They called that one on Drew Radovich, who's had some sciatica problems. He's been injured all week. The right tackle, Drew Radovich, is charged with the holding. Here you see McKnight just taking off downfield. Deceptive speed. He's like a glider. Matthew Harper's the guy that got basically used on the move, and there you see Radovich. Tough to look at the other guys in the huddle after a penalty like that. There's Shiloh Rashal blocking. Can't really see much of a hold there. Could see the hold, so maybe it was a little bit away from the play itself, and it nullifies a 65-yard touchdown run. to pass this time in trouble and down goes Sanchez and blowing in was Jerome Boyd. And with that we come to the end of the first quarter and a quarter much to the delight of the 41,000 on hand here at Autzen Stadium. End of one Oregon seven USC nothing. We're coming back. Seven to nothing ball game as we prepare to start the second quarter. And here is the hold. You're going to see Radovich, and he is going to have a hold of Ajimon. You see that. Does not let go. Ajimon would have made that play on McKnight. That's a good call by the officials. Radovich with the hold. Negates a touchdown by USC, and they got the ball. Third and long. Third and 23. And the game is to McKnight again, and McKnight gets a little room. Across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. He got a little bit of it back. Let's go down to the sideline once more. Jim Watson, this crowd always a big factor. No exception today. Absolutely, Barry. We're keeping one eye on the game, but we're keeping our ears on the crowd here at Austin Stadium, which is considered the loudest venue in the Pac 10. They call it the Thunderdome, so we brought the decibel meter today. Now, just to give you an idea, a Beverly Brook is like 50, a Jumbo Jets 140. I had it on on that last sack of Mark Sanchez. These guys are pegging out at about 112 right now. And let's see if somebody touched this football. This could be USC's ball, and it is. What a break. That's the second special teams turnover this afternoon by Oregon, both caused by their own guys. And you're going to see that one hits the foot. Garen Strong, and the Trojans get all over it. Very unfortunate play for the Ducks. Garen Strong, that ball right off his foot, and it looks like Malaluga is the one that comes up with the football. Another giant break for USC, and a potential momentum swing in this game if their offense, who only has one first down so far in this game, can capitalize. Give us to Washington. Washington gets a gap. Running over people down close to the 10 yard line. They'll mark it inside the 12. It'll be second down. Walter Thurman again on the tackle. But all of a sudden, Trojans started to open up some pretty good sized holes. And Shiloh Rashal has just come out of the game, looks like with a shoulder injury. Tiny Malu has replaced him. Shiloh Rashal, big time player for the USC offensive line. And they were very happy to have him back. But it looks like he's out for the time being. Second down and a long two. Davis split to the far side. And it gave us to the fullback, Kabili, and he's going to be close to the first down. And I believe he's going to have it. This is a team that 
historically has been built largely on a tailback and wide receivers. And this year, really, when they really need a play, they're looking tight end fullback. And USC football has changed in that way. Back in the day of Marcus Ash. inside the 10 yard line play fake Sanchez will throw looks for Davis now he's got to roll away throws for Davis too tall Davis stayed with that and actually made himself available and the pass was too tall and USC has made a habit of doing that on first down we saw it in this game right with the original turnover they will drop Sanchez back and try to get the ball to Davis there you see Boyd with the pressure Ball just sailed a little bit on Sanchez. Good defense all the way down the field. Dale Thompson trying to get open. No go. Two tight ends, two wide outs now. McKnight, the tailback. On second down. This is McKnight. Nothing doing. Stopped in the backfield. That was a blown play. You have two relatively inexperienced players in there in a stadium like this. Mark Sanchez and McKnight. Going the wrong way, and now you see Shadow Shaw coming back out on the football field. That is good news for USC fans. Loss of about four on the play. That'll be third down and goal back at the 13 yard line. Avili is the lone setback. And McKnight comes in motion. Straight back or Sanchez deep drop in trouble has to step up looks to the end zone and throws it knocked away Patrick Turner might have made the catch but he was out of bounds great defensive stand by the Oregon Ducks after a turnover they responded well twice you see the pressure coming for Sanchez that ball never had a chance to be completed inbounds but a great catch by Patrick Turner nonetheless and the Trojans doing a great job of getting the ball upfield with their run game, but when it got down to it, the first down pass kind of set him back. So a field goal try of 30 yards by Beeler. And it is on its way, and it is good. So USC on the board, and with 10-27 remaining to be played here in the first half, the Oregon Ducks lead the Trojans 7-3. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, 7 to 3. Oregon leads 10 27 left. Oregon has overcome itself so far. They sure have to open the game. The special teams turnover, but the great play by John Bacon on fourth down stops Joe McKnight. Here, Darren Strong, ball careens off his foot. USC again, able to capitalize just a little bit, but not as much as they wanted to. They have held USC after those two turnovers. The first one, four plays, only 23 yards, and then the second one, nine plays, over 20 yards, uh, just a little bit over 20 yards. That is, that is great defense by the Oregon Ducks, snatching back momentum here. This is going to be Stewart out of his own end zone. And Stewart's going to be stopped short of the 20-yard line at about the 17. First time the Ducks have had the football here in the second quarter. Dixon going to throw over the middle. Got a man caught by Dixon. Dixon all the way to the 41-yard line. Making the 46, 35-yard gain. Well, you talk about versatility. Dixon has rushed and passed for at least one touchdown in each game this season. He's already got a rushing touchdown. This one, almost a touchdown throw to Dixon. His tight end right down the middle of the field. Just a great play, and what an explosive offense the Ducks had. Dixon straight back again. Now he's going to run. Well, trying to take it to the outside. Look how easily he got around. The Trojan defender takes it to the 43-yard line. That's just a heck of a play, and he got some help once again on a nice block by Jonathan Stewart, a pickup of eight. Well, coming up at halftime, DeMar Goh and Mike Goldberg on the Hitachi Halftime Show. I'm going to bring you up to date on everything happening in college football. I'll tell you about the great trip header that we have. We're just in game one 
We're going to be with you here on FSN a long day until on into the evening. Dixon straight back again. Throws and Williams had him hit him right in the hands. Couldn't hang on. Well, there was a ref in the area. Kaluka Mayava was in the area. Harry Harris was in the area. Middle of the field has been pretty good to the Ducks, and that one really did hit Williams right in the hands. Unable to come up with it. That was the first down for sure. So now it'll be third down, less than a yard. Dixon to Stewart, Stewart outside, and he'll get the first down, all on individual effort. There were Trojans there, and big ones. Felix Gawala, Keith Rivers, who leads his team in tackles. Taylor Mays, the big, giant safety, 235 pounds. There's Rivers, but Jonathan Stewart, just too dangerous when he gets that body headed in the right direction. That's his game, and he plays it well. Inside the 40-yard line, blitz comes this time. They pick it up. Dixon with all day open in the middle of the field is Flugrad, first down. It was Stewart on the catch for the first down. Just found himself in space. Well, it looked like Flugrad. That's a guy that finds spaces in a zone. You don't expect this from a tailback, but Stewart able to get in that zone, show the quarterback his numbers. You don't see tailbacks doing that, going up and making that type of catch with their arms above their heads. They usually weigh much, wear much bigger shoulder pads. Jonathan Stewart with a giant play for the Ducks. First down at the 24-yard line. Dixon again over the middle and complete. That time Jason Williams ran it out. And I think Dixon was thinking he was running a post. Cushing with a good push that time for SC. Well, USC has started to realize they're not able to get pressure with their front four, bringing Brian Cushing to Sam Linebacker and finally getting a hit, a very rare hit, on Dennis Dixon. Incomplete passes are good at this point, though, for Oregon. Stops the clock. They got 30 seconds to make something happen here. And I trust this offense has the ability to do it. 30 seconds left in the first half. Ducks lead it by four. Dixon going to the corner of the end zone for Williams. No. Incomplete, could not quite hang on. There was a lot of pushing going on, too. Perfectly thrown ball by Dixon right in the hands of Williams. Kerry Harris is there, and like you said, it got pretty physical between the two guys slapping hands and wrists. That's a ball that could have been caught, would have been very close. So we'll bring about a third down, more importantly, 24 seconds remaining in the half. Tenth play of this drive for Oregon. So they, the Ducks have to think about a first down. They still have two timeouts. They come with a blitz again. Dixon had to unload early. And Dixon that time had to throw the ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. And that'll be fourth down. The field goal team will come on. The Trojans are starting to get what they want. You're going to see Cedric Ellis coming in with a hit. Lawrence Jackson. And Dixon finally taking a few hits. Seemingly, it's the first time this season that he's been hit by a very fast and angry USC defense. Great job by the Trojans that time. So Evanson to try the field goal. It'll be a 41-yarder. He's got plenty on it, and it is good. Well, we see very solid football on both sides with both teams. Defensively, everybody stepped up. It feels like the magnitude of this game is weighing heavily on both teams. And other, for, other than the special teams turnovers and the, the holding penalty, we haven't seen a lot of mistakes. It's been a great Pac-10 football game. We have not seen the offensive shootout thus far that a lot of people expected. All right, right now, let's take it out to Jim Watson. Why did Barry, we heard so much about USC's defense coming into this game. Mike, your defense looks terrific. Our defense is doing a great job. We've put them in really difficult situations. They've given up one field goal. That's pretty unbelievable, considering the fumble on the first kickoff and then the, the ball being touched on the other. So I'm really pleased and proud of them. We just got to keep the ball on offense. I think we can wear them down a little bit if we keep the ball. You ran the ball early in the game. Now you're passing it. You think you have SC off balance a little bit? Well, we got to try to keep them off balance. I, we got to try to wear them down. Our, our tempo usually wears on guys in the second half. We keep the ball. We're going to try to be balanced. I think you have to do it against a great defense. Appreciate the time. Mike Bellotti with a lead at halftime. Keep in mind, guys, 
Oregon's defense, number 68 in the country, coming in. USC, number three. Right now, let's send it to our college football Saturday studio for the Hitachi Halftime Show with Mike Goldberg and DeMarco Farr. We welcome you back to Hudson Stadium as we prepare to start the second half. 10 to three ball game, Oregon over USC. I'm Barry Tompkins, that guy right there is Petros Papadakis, and uh, P. Oregon put up all the numbers that they usually do in the first half, 224 yards. They average 550 for a game, but really there's only one important stat. And that is the touchdown scored in this game, and so far Oregon's the only one that has put it in the end zone, but it's only happened one time. Oregon's offense has been a joy to watch, and frankly so is the USC defense. They've been running around the field doing some good things and holding up that firepower that the Ducks possess. Offensively, USC is gonna have to start scoring touchdowns in this game because Oregon's offense is waiting to explode. They have got to open it up with Mark Sanchez as their quarterback, or they're not gonna win this game. And that is a bottom line. They're gonna get the football first to start the second half. Pete Carroll and his staff historically make great adjustments, although I have to think that this Oregon offense is a very difficult team to adjust to. Evenson will kick it away. Reed and Johnson will be the deep man for USC. 10 to 3 ball game. Oregon leads it. Evenson drives this one. It's going to be Johnson at about the five yard line. 15 20. Little gap to the 30, 35, and dragged down from behind. A good return by Johnson. Trojans on first down. They give it to McKnight. McKnight. Slipped by the first man, but not the second. If we go to the sideline, we don't ever want to slip by Jim Watson. Buddy? Barry, I was actually in the USC locker room. I had a chance to talk with Pete Carroll as he ran out to the sideline. You know, he's always an optimistic guy, but he did admit those two turnovers and the stop. They got to get more points than just three. Said defensively, got to stop the uh, quarterback run. Just too many easy yards on first and second down. And then offensively, he said, if we don't run the ball effectively in the second half, we cannot win this football game. SC, 55 yards rushing in the first half. Not very good. And started out with a rush of three yards here. Chauncey Washington is now the tailback. And Sanchez will go up in trouble. And throws for Washington. Just got that off before taking the sack. Fatete was there right in Sanchez's grill. Good play by Fatete, senior out of Bedford, Oregon. 310 pounds getting on Mark Sanchez. And also a very good job by Sanchez finding a way to get rid of that ball and defeat of Chauncey Washington and not take that sack. So it'll be third down now. Seven. Just three of seven and third down conversions in the ball game for USC. Desmond Reed in it running back for the first time. Two tight ends. Sanchez, late blitz comes. Sanchez throws, got a man wide open as Turner. First down into Oregon territory at the 38-yard line. Walter Thurman wasn't anywhere to be found. And that's what USC is going to have to do more of in this football game. Not only winning on third down, but letting the strong arm quarterback drop back and find people and throw that ball downfield and take some chances. If USC cannot do that or does not do that in this game, if they don't call those plays, they're going to have a hard time. Gain a 22 longest play of the ball game for the Trojans. First down at the 37 of Oregon. Washington got about a yard. John Bacon, first man to him. Bacon having a nice game at a middle backer spot. At the 36, second down and nine. Play fake, Sanchez to throw. Now he has to roll away from pressure, wants his receivers to come back to him. Finally, throws it for Davis, and Davis cannot make the catch. And it'll be third down. Good coverage that time by the Oregon Ducks. Mark Sanchez trying to direct traffic with two or three guys in his face. You don't often see that. And we have seen him flushed out to the sideline and trying to make these spectacular throws. Matthew Harper there with very good coverage on the spectacular USC tight end. Fred Davis, who has not had a very big game thus far. So third down and now the crowd again becomes a factor. Three wide outs. Stephon Johnson 
the tailback. This is Johnson. And Johnson will be stopped well short at the 32-yard line. And so from here, if you think it's field goal, it's a 49-yarder. Patrick Chubb that time with a good tackle on the first carry. He's had a catch on the first carry of the afternoon for Stephon Johnson. Looks like USC's going to go, and you have to figure they were expecting to do that with a very conservative call on third down, and it looks now like Joe McKnight is going in for Stephon Johnson. Fourth down at five at the 32-yard line. And a flag falls, and I think that's going to be a freebie. Catch is made for a first down by Turner, and I'm quite sure one of the Ducks came across. And I think it was Nick Reed who got across the neutral zone a little bit early. Well, that play was a little jumbled by the flags, but what a throw and what a catch by Mark Sanchez and Patrick Turner. What poise on fourth down. Defense, offside, penalties decline. First down. That'll take it down to the 11-yard line. 21-yard gain on the pass to Turner. He's had a 22-yarder and a 21-yarder on this drive. Sanchez standing strong and getting it to Patrick Turner, the junior out of Nashville, Tennessee. A guy, Patrick Turner, has came into USC with great expectations and hasn't quite lived up to him. Have a couple flashes here and there has had Patrick Turner, but certainly not like Mike Williams or Dwayne Jarrett or Steve Smith, like they expect. So a first down at the 11-yard line. Huge fourth down play by the Trojans. McKnight goes in motion, creating an empty backfield. Straight back Sanchez over the middle. Catches back, fumble. Ball is still loose and picked up by the Ducks. Jarris Bird has it, but I think they're going to call this play dead. Havili was the receiver. But I believe the officials are saying that the play was dead. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. Well, that was a bang, bang play. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to look at this, especially if that whistle blew. There's the throw. Havili never quite had it, was juggling that ball. That is the right call on the field. It's an incomplete pass. They're going to see it in slow motion. John Bacon closing in. And Havili. Did turn his head upfield, but never quite had that ball. And I think that is the right call. Stefan Johnson is the tailback. Elon Avili up on the wing. Now the shift. Short drop, Sanchez. Looking for someplace throws. Ball is caught this time, but for very little gain by Stanley Havili. Might have gotten about two. And as you can see, Havili is a guy they're very comfortable throwing the ball to and handing the ball to. Doesn't matter if it's over the middle. That time, way out in the flat. He's a guy that can do a whole lot of things for this Trojan deep offense. And he has been able to block pretty well, too, even though that's not the strongest part of his game. He's a runner, pass catcher, and then a blocker. That's pretty different than what USC normally have. So it'll be third down and eight. McKnight is now the tailback. Hazleton goes in motion. Sanchez deep drop. Going for the end zone. Jump ball, touchdown! Patrick Turner! doing what he could, but Turner, a big target at 6-5, came down with the ball, and what a factor he was on this drive. Three catches, including the touchdown. Stepping up huge is the young man out of Nashville, and Sanchez has found him, never really looks him off. Willie Glasper is the guy on the coverage, and Turner finding a way to use that big body, get between Glasper and the football and pull it down. Drive for point is up and good, and just like that, we are tied at 10. 10.53 remaining to be played, third quarter. We're coming back. USC has tied the game. There's the guy who tied it. Turner, three catches on that last drive for 52 yards, and Sanchez, four of seven, 54 yards on our Kawasaki scoring drive, a 10-play drive, 62 yards. Patrick Turner, the man. 
pulling off what he was expected to do by Southern California fans for the first two and a half seasons of his career, just taking over with that big body on that first drive of the second half of the Trojan. This is going to be Crenshaw at the goal line. A little gap up the middle, and he couldn't quite get to it. Dragged down at the 22-yard line. Stewart and Crenshaw in the ball game now. And this time it's Dixon on the keeper, steps out of a tackle, now pitches to a tackle. <laughs> he pitched that ball to Jeff Schwartz. Well, I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> I've never seen a play like that. First, he's going to fake it to Stewart, then stop. Sucks in Lawrence Jackson, and when he does, pitches it out to Jeff Schwartz, the senior out of Pacific Palisades, California, 340 pounds. Here's Stewart for the first down and more to the 40-yard line, dishing out punishment. Kerry Harris was given a straight arm by Stewart that knocked him about four feet out of bounds. Well, does a lot of arm curls, I guess. <laughs> He's got some guns, doesn't he? A gain of 15 and a... There's a blitz from the outside, and they give it to Stewart. Stewart will get it up to about the 42-yard line, and then they get it about four on first down. And all the way up here in the booth, you can just feel the strength of Jonathan Stewart as he runs into the middle of this USC defense. Ray Mawaluga, strong guy in his own right, making that stop. It's like a clash of the Titans in there, five yards from past the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. This time he puts it in the belly of Stewart, keeps it himself, does Dixon, and picks up about three. Sid McGillis on the stop, it'll be third down. Well, Dixon started the game completing 12 of his first 13, and he hit one of his last six attempts in the first half, and he's come out looking pretty good running the ball. Hasn't thrown in the second half yet. In his defense, though, he had a couple of drops. Put it up right here, and now he's in trouble. Scrambling. Now he's going to... Throw it away. Got outside the box, threw it away. Heading move by Dixon, but it's going to be fourth down. Great job by the USC defense that time doing what they do best, which is swarm and use their speed. Lawrence Jackson lead the charge. And they're doing a great job of containing Dixon right now. They're having to play zone in the secondary just to make sure that he doesn't get outside on them. And that time, Dixon unable to get outside the USC Trojans defense. Looks like they've adjusted pretty well so far here in the second half. And on fourth and three, they will punt the football. And this one will hit at the five yard line and be down at the four. So a very effective punt that time by Josh Seria. Trojans at their own five. Right up the gut to the 12. And all of a sudden, Trojan offense is picking up, too. Well, Patrick Turner and Mark Sanchez stepped up big on the first drive of the second half, and now they're starting to get Chauncey Washington going, trying to get that offensive line, which is big but battered, going forward against the Oregon defense, not particularly strong against the run. Second down and three. Greg Davis split to the far side. Give it a fullback this time. And Havili is going to be a little short of the first down. About a yard short. It'll be third down. And the pace of this game so far in the second half is starting to favor USC. Big, lumbering, angry pace with the clock running down. is Havili, and Havili, I believe, is going to get the first down. And the ball might be loose in there. Oregon is saying they have it. They'll call from the officials. This will be a huge sequence if, in fact, it is ruled a fumble. 
I wouldn't want to be on the bottom there, Barry. That could be ugly. Oregon ball. And this crowd is right back in it. Great opportunity for the Ducks to go ahead now with the turnover. The Trojans trying to catch Oregon off guard, getting quick to the line of scrimmage, trying to hit that fullback right away. Stanley Avili dead behind the center. And you see Avili stopped up, tripped by Bacon early. And as he's going down, that ball comes out. And I believe it was Will Tukwafu who came out of that pile with a football. You know, sometimes when you try to go quickly and get up to the line of scrimmage quickly, it hurts the offense a lot more than it hurts the defense. Here you're going to see the ball come out. It's down on the bottom there. Looked like Will Tukafu not only came up with the ball, but knocked it loose. Well, a huge opportunity now for the Oregon Ducks. This is Stewart. Not much. Trojans really stepping up defensively. It seems that they have made the correct adjustments, but here with a short field and that spread offense, it's going to be very difficult for USC to stop Oregon from scoring. Cedric Ellis that time with the big stop. Mike Bellotti told us they need touchdowns in the red zone. And they've been very effective at doing that. Second out and 10. Ball at the 16 yard line. Stewart again with a big gap to the five, to the four, touchdown. And like we said, when this is a team that gets inside the 20, they have those big offensive line splits and they create these giant vertical gaps on the football field and a guy that knows how to get through a vertical gap is Jonathan Stewart great run on to try to add the 17th point is Evenson 17 to 10 ducks 525 left third quarter we're coming back has recaptured the lead on the 16-yard run by Stewart. Evenson kicks off. This is headed for Ronald Johnson. Johnson at the 10, 15, to the 20. Steps out of a tackle at the 30 to the 32-yard line. Sanchez steps up, throws, catch made by Turner, first down. And Turner has come up with three huge catches here in the second half. The last two on Willie Glasper, the sophomore. Young kid out of Pittsburgh, California, only 184 pounds and under six feet. Turner has been using him up perfectly. Place ball, great catch by Patrick Turner, and he is starting to really step up in this football game. USC and Oregon, third down is completely and totally imperative want to win the football game doesn't matter if it's long or short first down at the 48 yard line now Sanchez going up on first down now a shovel pass to Turner again and Turner is surrounded at about the 48 yard line still not bad first down yard it's almost five yards Tukuafu makes the stop that time Sanchez making the decision kind of jump into the pile while Turner is trying to get upfield and they already have John David Moody with the injured finger, and they don't need another injured quarterback. Six carries, or six catches, I should say, 84 yards now for Patrick Turner. Right now, he's playing the game of his life and the biggest game for USC thus far this season. Second out and five. This is Chauncey Washington and a great tackle. Slipping under everybody it was Walt Furman to make the stop on Washington. Loss of about a yard, maybe two. Seemed like Chauncey Washington missed the hole. He had Drew Radovich pulling around. He needed to make a cutback a little bit earlier, try to take it outside, and that's where those corners can get to your legs. That's exactly what happened. So now it'll be third and seven. We have a momentary stoppage here. Baker, nothing if not tough. 
He's been having a hard time all year. It's just like his body has not seemed right. And many people claim that Baker is the best offensive lineman in college football, but he has certainly been banged up all year. Avili comes to the near side again. Straight back goes Sanchez. Throws wide open Davis in the middle of the field. First down. Sanchez finding receivers wide open on crucial downs. Found Davis right there. First catch of the day for Davis, but a big one. And you're starting to see the confidence of this SC offense swell as they let the young quarterback drop back, stand strong, and deliver that football. Fine protection by the offensive line, even with their best player going out on the previous play, Sam Baker. And Davis finding a spot and laying down. First down at the 38-yard line of Oregon. Straight ahead is Washington into the secondary inside the 30. About a yard short of a first down. Pick up a nine. John Bacon on the tackle. Trojans moving the ball almost at will right now. And this is saying a lot about the character of this USC team. On the road in the most hostile stadium, many argue, in college football. Just had a devastating turnover. Just gave up the touchdown. Here they come back on offense and put together a very impressive drive, winning on third down and going down the field with Mark Sanchez leading the way. Second and short. Two tight ends. And Sanchez is going to go up. Steps up. Throws. Intercepted. Picked off by Harper. Harper still on his feet at the 30. Steps outside 35. At the 40, looking for a block and caught from behind at the 42-yard line by Ronald Johnson. Huge play. And just when the youngster looks very poised, he goes to a often unused tight end, often used in the blocking game, but Dale Thompson not really thrown to a whole lot. Sanchez trying to find him. He's done a great job of distributing the ball to different people since he's been playing. This time, trying to get the ball to Thompson. It's underneath him. Actually, that's Anthony McCoy. Only two receptions on the year. Sanchez trying to find the young tight end. And Matthew Harper taking advantage of the ball behind him. Sometimes when you throw the ball to guys that don't expect it very often, they don't really know how to come back or fight for that football. But that ball was behind McCoy. Give to Stewart. Stewart trying to get a little room. Slips by one man. Gets to midfield. And he, be, he is going to get the first down on a great effort after he had been stopped. What a play by Stewart on the last play of the third quarter. A pickup of 15 yards on the play. And a first down as the third quarter comes to an end. Big play on third and 14. Oregon leads it. 17 to 10. We start the fourth quarter, 17 to 10, Oregon over USC. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, Jimmy Watson on the sideline, and USC came into this game minus three in giveaways, takeaways, and it's reared its ugly head again. Well, these turnovers in the second half for USC are apocalyptic for them. Every play in a big game like this is huge, and when you turn the ball over on a drive like that, and then Oregon just converts a giant third down with Jonathan Stewart, you're in trouble, and the Trojans could be in trouble right now, Barry. Stewart not the ball game right now. Crenshaw is the running back behind Dixon. Pump fake this time. Now Dixon throws and wide open for the catch of the big gator is Flugrad. Flugrad still on his feet to the 30-yard line. That pump fake, I think, is what gave Flugrad the extra yardage, a gain of 17. Taylor Mays makes the stop on a first down at the USC 30-yard line. Giant pump fake for Dixon, too. Brought the ball all the way down to his hip. You don't see that very often. And Flugrad, 172-pound coach's kid, true freshman, getting behind Garen Strong with a good block and matriculating his way. Ooh, Hank Stram. I know he's an old partner here. Hank Stram. 34 toss power trap. Dixon give to Stewart. Stewart looking for a place to go. 
and got something out of nothing, a gain of about two. Cedric Ellis on the stop for the Trojans. Well, this was the play that made this drive third and long for the Ducks, and you see the misdirection there, the handoff counteraction, and Stewart just doing it all himself. Five, six, seven, eight Trojans get hands on it before he gets the first down, and the power and speed and tenacity of Stewart is unreal. There's Flugard again on the swing pass. He'll get it down about the 11-yard line, only gain of about two. Kevin Ellison makes the stop. Actually, that was a last one. Ball was thrown backward. It's going to be third down and six. And you're starting to see Oregon doing the things they were doing in the first half to this USC defense. Going sideline to sideline, making them chase, making them move, making them run, spread the Trojans out, and then running upfield. This time they bring Williams to the near side. Two wide outs to the long side of the field. Third and six, big play. Dixon straight back. Now he steps up, he'll run, he's got room. Ten, five, first down at the three yard line. You know what you gotta love about Dixon, there's no hesitation. Once that decision is made, he's gone. That's what quarterback is all about, making quick decisions. And Dixon is showing a lot of toughness in this football game because he is taking monster hits from monster players on that USC defense and popping back up. He is not a big guy, 6'4", very tall, but only 205 pounds. You see those skinny legs, they get gone. Dixon kept the ball, looked like Stewart. I, it fooled me and it fooled USC. And Dixon kept it. It was a repeat, really, of the first touchdown run. There you see, that's a, one of the better fakes you're ever going to see in football. Pushing and Malaluga getting there late. And Dixon wanting it desperately. And Dixon, I think, reaching across the goal line. There is no sign yet from the officials. And they're going to say it's short. Oregon going very fast here inside the five-yard line. Lining up right away and trying to catch that USC defense off guard. The ball literally, well, there you see, about four inches from the end zone. Dixon to Stewart to the end zone. Touchdown, Ducks. The Ducks overcame their two turnovers and special teams in the first half. USC has not been as fortunate here in the second half with the turnovers that they have given to the Ducks. Jonathan Stewart getting headed in the right direction, rolling to the right side. Jeff Schwartz with a great block, looking a lot better than he did when they pitched him the ball. And a big time touchdown for the Ducks. Put some distance between them and the Trojans. Try for point is up and good. It's a 24 to seven lead. 24 to 10 lead, Oregon over USC. 24 to 10, Oregon over USC with 11.39 remaining to be played. Oregon will kick it away. Reed. And Ronald Johnson, the deep man for Southern California. And this one is driven. There'll be no return. Sanchez throws for Turner. He's out of bounds. Walter Thurman was there. Well, Mark Sanchez was the big question going into this game. How's he going to react in his second start on the road in his career, in his first Pac-10 start on the road? John David Booty kind of waiting in the wings. 
and no one knows what's going to happen next week with the USC quarterback situation. Could be miraculously that Booty's finger heals right away. I, I'm not sure really that this is all on Mark Sanchez today. I don't believe it is. Second down and ten. Deep drop this time. Sanchez steps up. Rifles caught by Hazelton at the 33-yard line. Patrick Chung makes the stop. Good throw by Sanchez. And if somehow Sanchez can get them downfield, that time Big Chung, 19-yard gain. If he can get them downfield and into the end zone, this game becomes a lot more interesting down the stretch. But it's got to happen fast. Desmond Reed is the tailback. Short drop. Now Sanchez looking deep. Throws for Hazelton. Makes the catch. I thought Hazelton got away with a push-off, to tell you the truth. So you got to do what you got to do when it comes down to this part of the game. Jerry is Bird and Hazelton going at it. And it did look like at the last second, Hazelton got freed up. Let's take a look at it. Hazelton kind of running a post and then to the corner and does get both hands on Bird and frees himself up. Not called. Nice throw by Mark Sanchez. In a 28. Don't go anywhere yet. Ball at the 38 yard line. Sanchez with all day to throw it over the middle caught by Turner first down at the 14 yard line Sanchez delivering three outstanding balls in a row here and just under five minutes left in this football game again USC has got to get into the end zone and then it's really on a crack the ball just inside the 15 Sanchez throws for the end zone to Osbury. He's got it. Touchdown Trojans. Flag down. But I think that's going to be interference against Oregon. Osbury, a very big receiver. 6'4", 225, redshirt freshman. Out of Labor, California. On the defense, number six. Penalties decline. Touchdown. Well, that happened in a hurry. This game just turned on a dime. That's by far the most impressive Mark Sanchez has looked as the USC quarterback stepping up on the road and delivering that ball perfectly to Osbury. It didn't even look like he was ready for it. It just fell into his lap. Beautifully thrown ball. Four straight great balls from Mark Sanchez. 85 yards in 48 seconds. And just like that, it is a seven-point ball game. Four minutes. 44 seconds remaining in the game. Well, P all of a sudden it's a ball game here. Mark Sanchez stepping up in a big way there and just picking apart that duck secondary, finding Turner, finding Hazelton, and finding Osbury in the end zone for the big touchdown. First touchdown of the year for David Osbury. Sanchez last 14, last four plays, plus 19, plus 28, plus 24, plus 14. Seven points. And it's kind of taking the air out of the stadium for the moment, too. This kick is going to be headed for Alston at the 10 yard line. Alston to the 20 and stopped as he crosses the 25. So now Oregon's going to have to do a little business on the offensive end, and they don't on first down as Stewart is stopped after a gain of not more than a yard. Lawrence Jackson, who's come up big in this game, makes the stop on Stewart. It'll be second and nine. On the last series, Lawrence Jackson, when Oregon was being more conservative, got some good pressure on Dixon. That time, got some big paws on Stewart. Well, you want to start talking about dramatic comebacks. You only have to look back as far as Thursday night when Boston College came back against Virginia Tech to win the game in the last couple of minutes. This is Stewart with a gain of about three more. It's going to be third down and five. Fili Moala on the tackle that time. Well, Oregon in this situation, when in the last series they were using time on the play clock, they don't have to call conservative plays but they do continue to have to run that clock and they're not doing that they're still running their no huddle and trying to go a little faster Trojans have two timeouts Oregon only has one timeout remaining Dixon gonna throw blitz comes Dixon throws incomplete off the hands of Williams 
Very catchable ball. Hit him right in the hands. All right, thanks, Mike. That's coming up right after we get out of Dodge and we go on into the evening with Arizona State and California. Meanwhile, there's still a ball game going on here. Oregon has got to give it back to USC. A short, wobbly punt. McKnight handles it at the 31-yard line, and it stopped immediately. Oregon only ran a minute and 24 seconds off the clock. And that could have very well been a minute and 44 seconds. They snapped the ball with a lot of time left on the play clock there. Not very smart clock management by the Ducks there. Poor time, but they really hurt themselves there with that penalty. Can Sanchez do it again and start finding those receivers? We will see. Stephon Johnson will be the tailback. Three wide receivers. Give is to Stephon Johnson. He gets a little something across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. He picked up about six yards on the play. Ajiman makes the tackle, but pretty good line push by the Trojans. And this has been a team that struggled a little bit with their identity this football season, the USC Trojans. This is the definitive drive of the season for Pete Carroll's team. Give again to Johnson, stopped in the backfield this time by Walter Thurman. Great penetration and a sure tackle. People are going to wonder about that play call. First down with the run, that was that was understandable that time. Giving it to Stephon Johnson again and losing yardage. Didn't work out as well. Now Reed comes into the backfield. Johnson leaves. Third down and five. Huge play right here. Straight back Sanchez with time. Throws caught by Hazelton. And he's going to be close, but I think short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard, I think. Jerome Boyd makes the tackle. Hazelton that time doing a good job of slithering forward. Sanchez doing a good job of finding him, working his progression. And here comes the down of the year both these football teams so far. No question about it. Oregon has been very effective on fourth downs defensively. Look out for that quarterback sneak. We talked about it earlier in the game. Mark Sanchez very effective taking it himself. They got a yard to go. The pitch this time to McKnight. First down and plenty more. Still on his feet at the 32 yard line. And the Trojans drive continues a gain of seven. They fake the dive to Havili. That's the play he fumbled on on third down in the third quarter that really changed this football game. That time they fake the dive and flip it outside, sucking the defensive end in. Very, very good call by Steve Sarkisi and USC Bosnian offense coordinator. First down at the 33. There's a screen for McKnight. McKnight tries to bounce it outside, now cuts back. Runs into the umpire and is stopped as he gets to about the 37-yard line. Pick up a four. Reed and Boyd on the tackle defensively for Oregon. It'll be second down and six. And the clock now becomes very much of a factor. USC has one timeout remaining. Sanchez straight back steps up throws Hazelton has it cracked as he gets the 47 yard line but he hangs on now the Trojans will hurry to line of scrimmage the clock will stop while the chains are moved Hodgman and Harper really stuck him but a first down for the Trojans all three wide receivers for USC who have been much maligned this football season stepping up huge Osbury Hazelton and Turner Short drop this time. Sanchez bounces it outside. Now he's going to run, try to head for the sidelines. Dives out of bounds to stop the clock. A gain of two. Pretty heady play by Sanchez. 38 seconds remaining. And when Sanchez is going well, you can kind of feel the energy that he brings to this USC offense. And he is truly bringing a sense of urgency here at the end of the game, trying desperately to tie it up. Dives out of bounds and makes the right play. USC's dominant stretch of five years in Division I football is really on the line here with this drive. They have one timeout remaining, so they can throw the ball over the middle. 
and call a timeout and save some time. Seven step drop this time, and he throws to the sideline. Davis can't hang on. And now it's going to be third down. At this point in the game, incomplete passes are not bad for USC as long as they're not on fourth down and you turn it back over to Oregon. That stops the clock and allows them to huddle up and call another play. Really, Barry, this seems to be the most competitive top half of the Pac-10 we've seen in years. No question about it. I think it almost goes beyond the top half, to tell you the truth. I don't think anybody right now particularly wants to play Oregon State. No, they're looking pretty good. Stanford's on the cut. Third down. Three-man rush for the Ducks. Sanchez throws to McKnight. He's got the first down. And now let's see what the Trojans do. They can hurry to the line of scrimmage. McKnight limps away. They, they are not apparently going to call their last time out right here. And McKnight could not get off the field there. He wanted to. He's limping. He's lined up out wide. And they're just going to spike the ball anyway. They had wow. to do that in order to get McKnight off the field. Night, they're looking at his left knee and he will come out. Reed will come back in. We still have a timeout remaining. It's second down. The ball's at the 33 yard line. They don't need to use the sideline exclusively. Sanchez straight back again with time. Throws over the middle. Accepted. Harper has another one. Harper at the 40. Harper steps out of bounds, and this game, for all intent, is over. One of the oldest rules in quarterbacking, they tell you, don't throw the ball late over the middle. Sanchez waiting a little too long, maybe a little too confident in that strong arm. Tries to fire it in there, and Harper makes it pay for the second time in the second half. The hero of this football game for the Oregon Ducks, stepping right in front of Fred Davis, who's had a subpar afternoon. Harper is the man in Eugene tonight. It's in his genes. Willie Harper, of course, former All-American at Nebraska, played the NFL for many years. His dad, got to be very proud of his son Matthew today. And Dixon takes a knee and this one's in the books. SC could still stop the clock once and they will do it. So it's not over yet. So they're gonna have to get the fans off the field. Even though Dixon has the football and is running off the field and now a fan stops and says you gotta go back out there. Do this one more time. And this is a different football team we have seen from USC over the years. They did not go down easy, but that final turnover three in the second half ended the game, and the Oregon Ducks hang on at home. Fantastic performance by Mike Bellotti's team, in particular his defense. The offense we expected to be great, but the defense doing a great job coming up with those turnovers, Barry. Absolutely, and I think that's what's going to be talked about nationally is about their defense. This time it is over. Trojans can't stop the clock. Student section pouring onto the field. And there is joy reigning supreme here at Autzen Stadium. No question about it. Oregon is still very relevant now in the national race, in the BCS race. Oregon is still a team to beat nationally and a team to watch. USC, now the best they can really hope for is the Holiday Bowl because the way the Pac-10 is beating itself up, it doesn't look like they are going to get two teams in that BCS. I'm sure Arizona State is watching this game very closely. Should they? have their way with Cal today, which is going to be easier said than done. You'll see that game tonight at 7 o'clock here on, on FSN. But uh, they come up here to play Oregon next week. Great win for the Oregon Ducks. They win it 24-17 over USC. Let's go to the studio and Mike Goldberg.